is this guy doing? I don't even know. I'm so scared of this guy. What the heck are you doing? You dude. I'm terrified right now. You look what I brought. You know why? Because <laughs> I was told that I look like Lord Farquaad sitting next to you, Shrek. So there we go. Look at this. Let's go. Sunday drive. Touch it. Taste it. You don't think the Browns are going QB number one? I don't. I, well, I, I could I could say this in a, in a bunch of different ways. Number one, Todd Haley's never developed any kind of quarterback. He's had a veteran. The only time he's had success is when he's had a veteran who can make up probably for his mistakes. I've never seen him develop anybody. So Bruce Arians. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's Arians probably a fair is, compromise. Is, is phenomenal. So he's not Arians. So... Who's going to develop him? The QB guru that's 1-31? in 31? He did a heck of a job with Kaiser last year. That was bad. And I'll put my foot in my mouth with Kaiser. I said that I thought he had the most... Oh, I, I thought he had the best projection as an NFL quarterback. And boy, was I off. It's all right. We, we, we have put our foot in our mouth a few times. Uh... Yeah, speaking of putting our foot in our mouth, I will be the first one to say um, I will eat crow. I uh, thought Minnesota was going to absolutely demolish the Eagles last week. I thought it was going to be a one-score game. Like, this week, I should say, this week has been an exhausting week emotionally for Bills fans. Oh, yeah just exhausting oh and here's I feel bad on a on a majority of on a, a, I feel bad on a multitude of levels for bevy. Eric Wood. I like bevy a, a bevy bevy of, a bevy of levels feel bad Too on many a bevy though. feel feel bad on a bevy of levels here we go with the English lesson again just as we get to Hortons once yeah. again I can't speak no so I feel bad for Bills fans on a multitude of levels as well as Eric Wood obviously um and I was saying something to my wife about it last night, and what I had said to her was, um, you know, I feel, as a competitor, I feel bad for Eric Wood because this was discovered at his exit physical, which, now I don't know the process for the Bills, but I assume had Eric Wood made the Pro Bowl, he wouldn't have had his exit physical till after the Pro Bowl. No. And so he would have been, had he made the Pro Bowl this year, he would have been able to go play a fun exhibition game, get some time in with his friends around the league, and then found out about this. But his last game would have been, you know, a, a fun exhibition yeah. from football standards. Not an unceremonious exit, you know, right. um, an exit physical day. Yeah. Um, plus, it begs the question, what if the Bills won in Jacksonville? Like what? To what extent is the injury? Right. So it's one of those things where he has a career-ending neck injury, which is something you don't play around. With. No. So, no. What could have happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, could it's? I guess when you look at it all considered, I guess it's better that he was able to have an exit physical, and and um, they found out that he unfortunately he can't play anymore, but. Better than him laying on the field in Foxborough. Right. Because we don't know. And if it wasn't one direct injury, if it was compounding, it makes you wonder what levels of medical checks these guys go through throughout the season. Yeah. I mean, the guy... In, in, uh, <laughs> in a, you gotta under... It's probably what... I'm not gonna pretend I'm a doctor or anything, but like... It's the C's that, that are the career-enders. 
C2, C3, yeah. all those things. So you gotta yeah. admit, you gotta, you gotta think it was something in there. I mean, if, if Peyton Manning can have four neck surgeries, go over to Europe, get something put in or whatever, and still play, what was the extent of Wood's injury? Obviously, he did. Manning didn't have the banging that uh, that Wood did in the trenches day in and day out for nine years, starting over 100, uh, starting about 120 games, four seasons starting all 16. Yeah. Uh, he's he's clearly on the level of to Bills fans of Fred Jackson, beloved. Oh yeah, player, well, beloved player. Well, that's an interesting conversation. Eric Wood as a Wall of Famer. Um, I'm not a prisoner at the moment, but yeah, I put him on it. See, and I would a decade in the trenches only have him. Would you go as far as the, his statistics and how the team performed? No, no, no. So. You know, I think a lot of the Wall of Famers, you know, recently um, were all the players, like, you know, who were the, the favorite of the generation, right? Yeah. I don't think Eric Wood was the favorite of, gener- of the generation. That's Kyle Williams. I think you could put Kyle Williams on the Wall of Fame and not put Eric Wood. And He's I got don't, four more years, though, too. So. True. I know, but they're still, they're still entrenched in the same generation of the team, right? Yeah. So even though Fred Jackson... Is on the Wall of Fame. Is he on the Wall of Fame? Fred's on the Wall. Do they put Fred on the Wall? I don't know. Yeah, he'll sure. be on. If he's if he's not, he will be. But they could classify that differently because Kyle made the playoffs. So now Kyle will be seen as part of the playoff team that broke the drought. So he's seen generationally different. Even though he's, Kyle was there for both and Eric was there for both, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. They're not going to be seen as part of the same generation. So. I don't think Eric Wood's a Wall of Famer. I think he did a lot for the community. I think he was a great guy. Yeah. Um, you know, for as big a guy as he was, and he was a mammoth individual, he was really approachable. He was a really great guy. He should go on the wall simply because he had to talk with Shope and the Bulldog every afternoon after games. I'd give that guy a, a key to the city. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I said that in this car. I said that. Um, but let me ask you this. Very interesting. Did was was Woods contributions or presence to the offense the same as Kyle's to the defense? Because I think if that's if that's your criteria, if that if that fills that checks that box, and you're gonna put uh, Kyle up, you gotta put Wood up and put them both in the same time. Man, that's a good point. Um, well, because Kyle's been calling third down blitz schemes. <laughs> for like four coaches now, right? That's that's been well, his role. I mean, Kyle's had the ability to to call line to call line assignments on third down. I mean, that's part of the center's job is to pick up and assist with blitz assignments. Well, and he's had a cavalcade of not so great quarterbacks that he's had the duty. Mean Eric, right? Eric, yeah. Okay, and, okay. I was, I was, I was confused. You said Kyle was calling third down blitzes. And th- yeah, I mean, freaking. Well, Wood, no, on the, Woods on the, has more. Wood no, has on the defensive had, on the defensive line, that's true. Kyle oh, yeah. had the responsibility of calling out line assignments for a lot of quarterbacks that were below average. No, no, no. I was referring. Oh, Kyle, never mind. Okay, let me try this one again. So Kyle's had the responsibility of calling line assignments on third and fourth downs when when the Bills were in fourth down situations. Yes. At, the last four coaches have given Kyle Williams that responsibility. Eric Wood had that responsibility every play because of his position, right? Yes. So that's a fair that's a fair point to make. Yeah. My counter to that is what quarterbacks did he make better? Wood? Yeah. Or one. That's I'll But you think I, I think of it the other way. How much worse would the Bills offense have been? If Wood was not your centerpiece in the middle of that line, you don't see centers getting moved around on teams. No, it's such an underrated position. It always really goes. He always goes in the basement of the draft. Nobody ever pays when attention you, to the position. When you come and up when to you the draft line, the guy, he's there for seven, eight, nine, ten years. Like you said, but yeah, I know. When you said with guys, with Kyle coming up to the line, he would call the line assignments, and every defensive coordinator that the Bills have had have, have bestowed that responsibility upon him. As far as the offensive side of the ball, if you want to, you can have your center, you know, do the calls as far as map protection goes in the NFL. They make a one, two, or a three call. Okay, one, there's one guy between the, the two cards in the center. 
if you make a one call, more than likely it's a 3-4. Mm -hmm. All right? You're blocking the two linebackers and the three down linemen, which are five offensive linemen. you got to make that call. Second one, you make a two call, it's usually a 4-3. And that relays it to the quarterback and the running back on who to block whoever blitzes. A lot of times, when, or when you have a lot of turnover at the quarterback position, the center has all that responsibility, and he has. So lead, uh, leading the league or being top five in rushing definitely speaks to Wood because he was the centerpiece there for those years as well. Um, a guy that's had more hands in his ass than probably Central Henderson at this point. You're making a really great point till like, right there. <laughs> No, but it's it's uh, I I'd put him on. That's that's the bottom line. I'd put him on if for all the reasons you would put Kyle on, and he had four more years. And he, I, I know Wood doesn't have the ringing endorsement that uh, that Kyle did as far as uh, Belichick. Belichick said he was he was the one guy he was worried about was Kyle Williams when they played the Bills. So for twelve years, he's had to design offensive blocking schemes around Kyle Williams. Not the whole plan, but you gotta account for that monster in there. Yeah, you convinced me. He can go. <laughs> You're in. See ya, dude.